One other thing that I want to tell you about the international test, on that last one, where we ranked in the middle, the American schools that had less than 10% of their students in poverty had test scores that were significantly higher than those of Finland, Korea, and Japan over a leaders. And the schools, our schools, where 25% of the children were in poverty, had scores equivalent to Finland, Korea, and Japan. As the level of poverty rises in the schools, the test scores fall. If we could reduce poverty, we would see higher test scores across the board. But the reformers, unfortunately, don't want to talk about poverty. They prefer to believe that schools alone can solve the problems of social inequality. I've been told this again and again. We can't fix society, let's just do the schools. But they're wrong. They're demoralizing our educators and they're wreaking havoc on schools, teachers, principals, students, and communities. Last year, the corporate reformers heavily, heavily promoted a propaganda film called Waiting for Superman. That film, subsidized by the Gates Foundation and the ultra-conservative billionaire who owns Walden, Walden Media, one of the major producers, has simple but by now familiar storyline. American public education is failing, the international scores are terrible, the national test scores are terrible, children are cheated. All this happens because of these lazy and competent teachers who can never be fired because of their all-powerful, greedy unions. Now, what they didn't tell you is that 50% of the people who start teaching are gone within the first five years. So much for this myth that teachers can never be fired. Teachers leave, teachers are fired. And the film had solutions. That is, privately managed charter schools, most of which have no unions, testing and accountability, performance paid based on test scores, deregulation, competition, firing teachers whose students get low scores. This is such a familiar story by now. It, the film also asserted that poverty was not a problem, resources don't matter, because we're already spending quite enough. It's interesting that they held up as an example of poverty doesn't matter and resources don't matter. Uh, Jeffrey Campbell's Harlem Children's Zone, and I admire the Harlem Children's Zone because it's an anti-poverty program. <laughs> it has wraparound services. It has high school classes with 15 students and a class and two certified teachers. It has $200 million in assets in the bank. It has medical programs, it has health clinics, it has one-to-one -one tutoring, it has intensive this, that, and everything else. It doesn't make the point that the movie was trying to make. When I saw this movie, my head started spinning because I had heard the exact same claims for years within the conservative think tanks that I had abandoned. That movie and the various books and articles that followed all repeat the same storyline, the same narrative. And this narrative was wrong. Of course there are problems in American education. Of course we have to improve our schools. But the corporate reformers have identified the wrong problems. They're wrong in their analysis, and they're wrong in their proposed cures. The single most reliable predictor of test scores is family income. Poverty is a problem that drags down academic performance, not bad teachers. Poverty is the elephant in the room that reformers don't want to talk about. The more poverty, the lower the scores. The more affluence, the higher the scores. This reflects differences in family education, family literacy, books in the home, access to health care, access to good housing, safe neighborhoods, basic nutrition. All these things matter. They matter to children. They matter to families. They matter to motivation. 